In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Lumetri Scopes Vector Scope YUV graph to get near perfect skin tones every time. This is going to help advance and help you really get more precise with your color correction and grading. Now this is a bit of an advanced lesson, so if you're taking the full course, this might be one you wanna skip if you're not into the more advanced stuff. It's also going to be quite a long one because I'm gonna get really detailed in how I am trying to match this shot of me with the poor lighting, the multiple lighting sources, to match to this talking head, which is properly lit and very close to perfect white balance from the get-go. So first, I wanna show you how the Lumetriscope Vectorscope graph shows skin tone and how we can use it to make adjustments. And then I'm also gonna show you how this will work on different skin tones as well. In this graph, we have this these diagonal lines and this line in the top left quadrant, or I guess the top left of the circle, is what's called the skin tone line. Now this line is actually reading the color of blood running under skin and it should work decently for any type of skin, any shade, any color, any ethnicity, it's still going to work quite well. Maybe there's times you want your footage to look a little bit warmer or cooler for that grade, but if you're just trying to get proper looking footage, this can truly help. So let me show you how it works. So first, this is an unedited, uncorrected footage, but let me just take my white balance color selector I'm gonna choose this cabinet in the background so to set white balance too. So now this is pretty much spot on with white balance. It's reading everything in this frame. So why, what I need to do is isolate my skin so that it can just show what color that is basically. To do that, there's multiple ways, but one way is in the effects control panel. And I'm gonna bring that down here that's the preview of a clip we're gonna play with later on. But now down here, we have it open so that we can see it as well as our vector scope graphic graph. Under opacity, we have three different masking options. These can help us create circles, rectangles, or free draw with this pen tool of our footage. So if we take that pen, it creates a mask layer and now if we go on our footage and we just click and drag or just click once to set a, a sharp point, we can now create a little mask and we can move these points around so it's just on my skin tone. And we can see that in this graph now the colors line up pretty closely to that line. From here we can make some minor adjustments taking the tint down just a little bit and now if we delete this mask by selecting it and pressing delete. Our skin tone is pretty darn spot on. That being said, I think the background here looks a little green from that tint. So I'm actually going to undo that change. So undo, undo, so keep that tint there and then delete the mask. I think even though my skin tone was just over to the right of this line, that's fine. That's where I want my skin tone to be. This looks natural to me. If we go to this next color corrected or uncolor corrected footage, this looks just bad. Again, what we wanna do is set a basic white balance. So if we take our white balance selector, we're still going to balance to the background of this, these cupboards, and that should give us a good starting point. The background grays should match decently Although there is some lighting difference. So, you know, there's some warmer lights in here, but trying to get the backgrounds to match is going to give an overall better impression jumping from one shot to the next. And so let's open up our comparison view again. So if you don't see that, just click the plus button. Make sure you have this comparison view icon down in your panel. And with the split screen, we can see it's pretty darn close. I'm gonna make it a little bit cooler actually. So that matches the background. So see how that brought the grays even closer in color? Turn that off. It's pretty close. 
but the skin tones aren't perfect yet. Now, if I take a mask again on this shot and we mask out a little area on my forehead, my shiny forehead, we can see that this line, I don't know if you remember, but it's a little bit further to the right than this shot, the skin tone was. Now, the problem is I can say, okay, well, I'm just going to take my tint and drag it to the left to bring it closer in line with what it was on the other shot. But if I do that, it changes the entire shot. And now the background doesn't look great. The backgrounds don't match. And so these shots aren't going to match. So what I want to do instead is isolate the, the skin tone and adjust just that. So how do we do that? How do we pick a color and adjust just that color? We've learned that in the class. That's the HSL secondary panel. Or that's one of the ways to do it. And my preferred way method for this. So what we want to do now is with this open, select my skin tone. Let's turn on this little box right here. I can even turn on the black color in black so we can see a little bit better. And now what we want to do is try to select as much as my skin tone as possible. We can even use this little plus icon to add more parts of my skin, which I think is going to help. And then we can use these adjustment sliders to kind of hone it in just a little bit. I'm not, I don't mind too much that the background, those, the lighting or the, the frames of the background, this board on top of the cupboards is being selected. Maybe increasing the blur here, increasing the blur, and then decreasing the selection is actually going to do a more precise job, actually. Okay, so something like that's pretty, pretty good right now. So now we can see that it is selecting a range of our footage. So to be even more precise, we can add a mask on top of this. So what we've done so far is we're setting the key. So what we're going to adjust is just the skin tone. But to really see it up here in the Lumetri scopes, let's set a mask again to my shiny forehead. Okay. Now I have two masks on here for some reason, so let me delete this first one. So now we see that we're just selecting the forehead to, to view here, and it's pretty darn close. But here we're going to just make a micro adjustment underneath HSL down here on the bottom for tint. I'm just going to bring down just a little bit. And then temperature just extend just a little bit. So now let's delete this mask. Let's turn this off. All right, so now if we look at these two shots, the skin tones match even better. And the background, it's still very similar. It's still very close. Of course, it's going to be a little bit different because we've got a combination of lighting going on in the second shot. But playing from one to the next, that's pretty darn close. So these are some very micro adjustments that you might make when trying to match footage. Let's go through another example. So this is a shot that I downloaded from pexels.com. So shout out to Pexels. If you want to follow along, go ahead, look on Pexels, find a shot. I'm not able to share this with you for a download, but hopefully budge your own back. Uh, has this shot available for you to practice with or just search for a shot of, of someone with a different skin tone. I tried to find one where the color was off as well. It wasn't perfectly natural. And so this is a good shot for that example. So this is a 4K shot. So I'm going to right click and choose set to frame. And you can tell there's just kind of this bluish magenta hue to it. And so to correct this using this method, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go into effects controls. We're going to take our opacity and create a mask. Let's do it on this guy's forehead. Oops. And we can see that the skin tone is off. It's over on the right hand side. 
So if we go into our basic color correction this way, and we warm it up quite a bit, and then we again drop the hue just a little bit to on that line, and then we delete our mask, we can start to see that this actually looks a lot better. So this is a lot more of a naturally lit, better white balance shot than previous. So if we turn this on or off and then on, much, much better, much more natural skin tone for both of these men right here. And so again, you can make micro adjustments and maybe this would have done the same thing. Let's, let's just delete this, let's reset. If we just do white balance to something white in the frame. Mm, see, no, not as good. Let's try that again with this gray in the background. A little bit closer. But I think what we did right here looks pretty much spot on and the best of instead of the auto white balance. And that was, again, using that skin tone line, which is works for different skin tones. So I hope this helps you. Again, it's it's depends on your style. Maybe the director wanted this to have that sort of cooler look so that it looks like it's maybe more in the morning and the shade or something like that. Or maybe you want it a little bit warmer to look like it's coming in. There's got this sunset golden light coming in from behind them. But if you're looking for a natural, white balanced, better skin tone, this skin tone line in the Vectorscope YUV should help you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in another lesson.